Ever since, traveling for me meant to be active. I was taking on new outdoor challenges every year. From skiing in the Alps, to rafting in South America, biking trips in North America and several multi-day trekking adventures in places like Patagonia, Peru or Kyrgyzstan. This year I was ready for the next step. Climbing one of the seven summits. When G-Adventures asked me to become part of their Wanderers program, I saw my chance to take on the highest mountain in Africa as one of their brand ambassadors. But little did I know how hard this endeavor would be. I'm struggling. It's probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Unlike other trips, this one started actually five months before the first day of trekking. I worked on my fitness, changed my diet and did a lot of research on Mount Kilimanjaro. Located in northeast Tanzania, Mount Kilimanjaro is 5895 meters the highest mountain in Africa, which makes it one of the seven summits. Apart from that, it is also the highest freestanding mountain in the world. Kilimanjaro is a dormant volcano with three volcanic cones, Kibo, Mawensi and Shira. The highest point is located on Kibo. After the independence of Tanzania, it was named Uhuru Peak in 1964, which is Kiswahili and translates into Freedom Peak. Being one of the most popular mountains in the world, roughly 50,000 trekkers every year try to reach the summit. According to research published by the Climb Kilimanjaro Guide, the average summit success rate across all climbers and route is 65%. However, summit success rate heavily depends upon what route is climbed as routes vary considerably in terms of acclimatization profile and duration of climb. To get to Uhuru Peak, there are several routes and itineraries to choose from. The most popular but very crowded one is the six-day Marangu, also called Coca-Cola route, with 64 kilometers where you get to sleep in basic huts. The second most popular is the seven-day Machama route with 49 kilometers. The 65 kilometer long Rongai route is the only one which approaches Kilimanjaro from the north and takes six days. I decided to take on the Limoche route, which is 56 kilometers long and takes altogether 8 days. My decision was based on two reasons. One was the fact that the itinerary of this route is the best for acclimatization of the body to the high altitude and the resulting high summit success rate, which is at 96% for G-Adventures. The other reason is the beauty of the route, which is often described as the most picturesque and spectacular of all popular routes. After weeks of preparation, I made my way down to Moshi, where I met the group and got a last briefing the evening before we left for the big adventure. Welcome to Tanzania. So it begins. It's day one of trekking up Kilimanjaro, the Moshi route. Here is James. Yeah, here is the starting point, and we have 7k from here to Mtimkubwa. Apart from the guides, our tour group consisted of altogether 10 people, who came over from the UK, Canada, Australia and Germany to tackle the Lamasha route. One of them was Larry from Newfoundland, who dreamed of climbing Kili for many years. I looked at it and read about it and saw videos on it. About 15 years ago, I said, I'm doing it by the time I turn 65. So we're starting on 2,100 meters, going up to 2,750 meters. Pretty short hike, only about six kilometers. And then we are at camp after about three hours of hiking. So smooth start to the track. So the cool thing about the Limoche route is that you actually goes through all climate zones. So we're starting here at the rainforest, surrounded by trees, it's pretty green. Every now and then you can see monkeys actually. 
And then as we're going higher up, the whole surroundings are changing, which makes up for a pretty interesting hiking experience. All right, three hours later, we made it to M Team Kuwa Camp. We've seen him at the beginning of this day. Here's our guide James, the CEO of this trip, and he will lead the whole tour to come up to Uhuru Peak. So the question is, how many times have you actually done it? I have been on the mountain 170, and I have a, a experience of 10 years of climbing mountain. I started as a porter, I mean a, a G fighter, and my company has promoted me to go to school and then I become a CEO. I feel proud like to take people on the top. You know, sometimes we have a passenger, they, they take like a three years or five years to plan to come to Kilimanjaro. So once they reach on the top, I, I make uh, the dream of people to become true. It means they are achieving their goals. Good morning, it is day number two. After getting up at 6.30 today, we're now on the trail. We have about eight kilometers to cover today. An elevation gain of 800 meters until we arrive at Shira One Camp, which is at 3,540 meters. Yeah, starting in the jungle and heading out into the savannah today. now leaving the tree line and heading into the moorland. We don't only have one guide, we have several guides guiding us. Here's Kajeri, he's, he's with me most of the time because I'm in the back of the pack to get some good shots for you guys. And we're now actually pretty close to lunch. So we're heading up here, see that? We're heading up here, all the way over there, and then into the clouds and this is where we're gonna have lunch somewhere. All right, my man, are you ready for lunch? Sure. Uh, sure. We're now at the lunch spot. He's a bit hungry. Huh? Ah, he's a little yeah. bit hungry. Yeah. We're at uh, 3,200 meters now. Yes. For lunch, we have an African stew, which is plantains, chicken, vegetables. This will bring us up the map. This is our lunch spot down there, and now we're making our way up here. We must be at 3.7 now. How are you guys feeling? Great. Great. <laughs> Going, strong. Going strong. Camp is close. This is the first time we are seeing Kibo, or parts of it. We're heading down there to Shira One Camp, that is the destination for tonight. And then each day from here takes us closer and we'll see, maybe we see it without clouds tonight or tomorrow in the morning. We reached Shira Camp! Woo! Whoa, wow! <laughs> now that we arrived at Shira One Camp, let me show you around a little bit. First of all, we have about 34 people who are actually from G Adventures here with us. This is 29 G Fighters, the porters. We have one chef and four CEO with one main CEO. These are our guides. Well, what happens is uh, once we finish at our camp, the first two G fighters are actually coming up to the next camp. They're basically running the trail um, to claim the camp spots and to pitch all our tents. And the other porters 
they're coming later because we also have lunch and they have the lunch tent, they have the crew tent, they have the toilet tents with them and this is what they set up actually for lunch, this is what you've seen today and then they come up here and with the other crew members they're actually setting up the whole camp. So let's have a look at the tents and we're starting off with our personal tents these are three season tents let's have a look inside so as you can see these are two person tents and once you arrive you already have the mattress in here your sleeping bag and all the stuff which the G fighters brought up for you and once you arrive we get a bucket of hot water for us yeah. to clean ourselves thank you on each campsite you can find public toilets but since we are 10 groups on this Limosha route and it gets more and more the more we hike up the more we get joined by other routes we thought about investing some extra money to have these two toilet tents for us so these chemical toilets are just for our group and then we don't need to line up over here with our G-Fighters there's the cooking tent this is where the magic happens and this is the mess tent this is where we get served breakfast, lunch and dinner even though we're hiking for such a long time it's pretty luxurious let's have a look inside Ooh. warm peanuts mm. for dinner tonight we have pumpkin soup and we have to share our one plate with vegetables, rice, beef and cabbage. Just as we were sitting down for dinner, there it is, Kibo, and it's full glory. day number three here is the sunrise right next to Kibo on Kilimanjaro tea is being served we're getting up having breakfast and then we're heading to Shira today that's all right yeah thank you huh? Today we're heading to Shira 2 camp. We slept at Shira 1 camp down there at 3,600 meters approximately. And Shira 2 camp is at an altitude of 3,800 meters. Today we're doing a little bit of a detour because we're going up to the Shira top to acclimatize. There's this certain rule to acclimatize in high altitude which says climb high, sleep low. That's what we're about to do today. Let's go. Today's hike is pretty nice and gentle because we're walking across the Shira Plateau and this plateau actually, they believe, was a caldera which filled up over time. Shira over there where we're heading to is the first crater here on Kilimanjaro. This is the first place where lava erupted. Then was Moensi and the youngest crater is actually Kibo, the main goal for this trip. But now we're hiking to see the old guy. Now on to the last part, up to 3,900 meters, the top of Shira. Whew. After four hours of hiking, we made it to our first summit, Larry, Mount Shira. Whoa! Done! It's amazing. I actually got emotional and the only reason I didn't cry was because that would be embarrassing. <laughs> but it's gorgeous. Shira Peak is 3,872 meters high. And Shira actually means war. So this is the war peak because this was the very place where the two tribes were fighting, Maasai and Chaka. Today, this is a place where you can enjoy an incredible view. Looks a little bit like Jurassic Park down there. Eight hours done, 
Shira two camps, 3,850 meters. Larry, we did another milestone. Another one. Yay. Wow. It's a long day of trekking. It's time for a late lunch. And lunch today is spaghetti. One of the highlights every day, besides the landscape, is of course the food. And here's the man behind all the magic we see every day. Yes. It is our chef, Michael. Jina langu, Michael. Pishi wise travel. Nico zaidi miaka saba. He been as a chef till today is seven years, but he started as a G fighter. He been here like 110 with a group. And this here is the cooking tent. So let's have a look inside. This is where the magic happens. And today they're making pizza. Given all the circumstances on the mountain, the job Michael is doing is phenomenal. In only two hours, he manages to prepare three course meals for the whole group. Nutrition-wise, he focuses on... He says is pasta, but uh, uh, and also in order to get protein, he says it's better to have beef or chicken. Apart from cooking, Michael is a great entertainer. Together with the whole team, we finished off day three with some songs and danced while we enjoyed an amazing sunset. Good morning, it's 6 o'clock, as you can see it's pretty cold up here at almost 4,000 meters with about minus 5 degrees tonight, but I have some warm sleeping bags snuggled in so everything is good and the sunrise is just incredible. Apart from that I can actually already feel a little bit of the altitude. I got a headache yesterday, um, but now luckily it is gone after I slept. And apart from that, I don't have any signs, so I'm doing good. No lack of appetite or vomiting or anything serious. Uh, we get our blood oxygen measured every night and I got 92 last night, which is pretty good for this altitude. And the headache will probably come and go this is the experience of the guides. So I'm doing fine. Today we're heading up to 4,650 meters to Lava Tower. That's where we have lunch. And then we head down to almost the same altitude to camp. So again, hiking high, sleeping low to acclimatize for the big day. 10 kilometers to go. But first, taking in this amazing sunrise. Ocean of clouds, Mount Meru over there. Such an incredible place. Today is not any other day. It's a very special day because today it's the birthday of this young man here. He just turned 35. <laughs> I, wish. I feel 35. Though. We are 4,200 meters. How are you doing? Doing well. Stomach is uh, a little queasy, but uh, nothing serious. Nothing serious. Still able to function. Our group is doing pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. My yes, headache sir. is my headache is almost gone, and from here we can actually see over there is Machame route. You can see over there in the distance on the rim. These are people coming up, and there you see this one, the first rock you see. This is Lava Tower. This is where we're heading up to. You can see down there is the trail leading up to Lava Tower. This is where we will be having lunch. Now that we are approaching Lava Tower on 4,650 meters, I think this is the right time to talk about altitude and altitude sickness, how to cope with altitude. And I'm here with my boy Francis, another one of our CEOs with us on this Le Mosche route. Yeah, first of all, I gotta say, altitude sickness is something which can affect everyone, no matter how old you are, how fit you are, or how strong you are. Which kind of tips can you give away when climbing Kilimanjaro for altitude sickness? Walking pole pole, which means you have to walk slowly, slowly. Mm -hmm. Drink enough water. Also, you need to take a longer route, like we are doing Lemosho route eight days. 
you get enough time to acclimatize. Mm -hmm. And also we have another one saying, hiking high, sleep low. We normally just starting our day, going to the highest point, and then just descend to the lower point, which is going to be our camp. And also, what we need to do also sometimes, you need to listen your body. You don't need to overpay, you are not to overpace. Because what we are looking is your safety. Yeah. You don't have to push yourself going to the altitude because sometimes when it's become worse, it, it can be something different. So guys, always stay safe. And when you really have severe syndromes, which are strong headaches, vomiting, no appetite, nausea, and it gets really strong, you maybe even feel some water in your lungs, you always need to tell your guides be safe in a case of an emergency just go down the only treatment for the altitude sickness we normally say you have to descend yeah. because the more you go to the lower elevation you're going to regain and becoming more fit on that note stay safe guys our, our group so far is doing good we're approaching lava tower now for lunch there we are lava tower 4600 meters exhausted Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've, but I've, I still feel good. Altitude sickness? Yeah. No, oh, slight headache. Slightly headache, but I guess had, it's normal. Um, some paracetamol and I feel good. Okay, it's we're high on drugs and we're high on life. So, let's get high on food. <laughs> Bread with peanut butter and the dairy is the vegetable soup. And the chicken vegetable stew with potatoes. After lunch, we're now heading down three kilometers to go to Barranco Camp. Further down, and this is where you can see vegetation again, as well as waterfalls. It is misty in the camp, but we are shining. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I turned 65 on the mountain. <laughs> they surprised me with a cake and uh, singing. Uh, a little embarrassing actually, but it was quite a nice experience. Good morning from Barranco Camp. It is day number five at Kilimanjaro. Today we are tackling the Great Barranco Wall, also called the breakfast hike because this is the first thing we're gonna do after breakfast. We have about four kilometers today and we're going up to 4,200 meters. I'm so excited. There you can see all the hiking groups going up the Barranco Wall like an army of ants. Barranco wall was unbelievable. When they told me that I was going to climb that wall in the morning, I said, no, there's no way we can get up there. But uh, we did. Climbing the Barranco wall means a lot of bouldering and we're now at the Kissing Stone. It's called like that because you go right next to it so you could kiss it. The scene from the wall was it was just unbelievable. You made it to the top. Hello. All these happy faces. Oh, more exhausted faces. 4200, Barranco Wall. Yeah. James, I've seen you struggling. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Heading <laughs> down now. Following this route over there. Going to Karanga Camp. Snack time, almost at camp. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Wild chocolate. 
really good. Especially with that view here. <laughs> Made it to camp alive. <laughs> As we're approaching summit day, it is finally time to introduce you to the G-Fighters. The ones which are making everything possible. The ones which bring us up this mountain. We have about three G-Fighters per person here to help us get all the stuff, get the camp and everything going and to be able to make the push to the summit, Kilimanjaro. And for that I'm here with one of them, with Joseph. And he will tell us a little bit about his story and what it is like to be a G-Fighter. I was at the school and then after finishing the school I was decided to join in G-Fighter and now three years yeah. a work of G-Fighter. I have been in the mountain times 20 and uh, on the top times 5. I was wake up uh, at uh, 7 and then I make some tea. I do preparation of my bag, we sort the luggage, everything maybe 20 kilogram. I just waiting the permission of our G fighter and guides, and then we start the trip. Yeah, Shiratu to Baranko, I took me three, three hours. Kirin Banjaro for me, first year of all, I met with different friends and uh, different country, and they give me. More, more experience and all is your of G fighter to know many things about the mountain to ch to change the mind maybe uh, maybe I'm wrong my brother telling just you're wrong now you you have to change so it's a big advantage to to run to motivate me to be the best one one day. morning it is day number six in front of Kilimanjaro today we're heading to the base camp because this night is summit night I didn't have the best night to be honest uh, I have a lot of syndromes of high altitude sickness I have a pretty strong headache I feel like I could vomit and I have strong pain in my junks so I hope this will improve over the day be able to summit tomorrow. We're heading to Barafu camp today. That's the last part of the trek before we summit this night. It's about four kilometers but I don't believe all the <laughs> kilometers which are on the signs anymore because it always is longer. About four to five hours and then we're close to that. Pole pole all the way. We're in the clouds now. Whew. It's a little appetizer for what's what's coming. So the drugs work. We're getting on. We're now at 4,400 meters in the Alpine Desert. Since the sun is gone, it's pretty cold. Last stop before heaven. <laughs> Barafu camp. Guys, we made it to base camp. We did. Oh, you did. Awesome. Are you ready for tomorrow? Uh, I tonight? Hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it's tonight. Tonight it is. Alright, guys, just arrived at camp in my tent. Time for some real talk. I'm pretty exhausted actually. Today, 700 meters ascent. It's pretty tough. The headache is pretty strong. My stomach is doing not so well. And I have pain in my junks and my back. <sighs> Will be a tough one tonight. But I still try to make it to the top. It doesn't look too serious from the signs uh, regarding to the guides. We will make another measurement of my blood oxy oxygen and of my heart rate. But for now, I just need first to take a rest, get something to eat, and then prepare everything for the summit night. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Mr. Steve, 88. Oxygen level. 
Okay, guys. It's time to leave. All right, guys. It is close to 12. We all geared up. Several layers on. We're ready to go up Uhuru Peak. Feeling pretty bad, actually. Got fever, headache. So, let's try to do this. As you can see, there's quite a train of people going up the mountain. We started an hour ago, we're now already at 4,900 meters. I'm struggling, it's probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But I try to push myself to the top. There it is. This is Kibo, and Uhuru Peak is the highest point. <sighs> Let's do this. How's that for a morning stroll? Um, the break in. <laughs> That's good. It's invigorating. I feel alive. Down there, in the fog, that's Moshi. This is where the beer is waiting for us. <laughs> We made it to 5,300 meters. Well done, well Having done, guys. Having a break. Well done. Pretty tough work. The struggle is real. <laughs> oh man. Don't give up. Yeah. Guys, you're still doing great. How are you doing? Oh, I'm struggling. It is tough, really, really tough. But hanging in there. But as the night went on, it became more and more difficult. Somewhere into early morning, uh, it was almost impossible. We are now hiking for six hours. Totally exhausted. Meanwhile, we are bright. Up there, Stella. The the CEOs they kept us occupied, kept their minds off of what we were doing. You are the hero. You are the dream team. Finally made it to Stella Point. We made it to Stella Point. Now. Just another 45 minutes along the crater rim to the highest peak, Voodoo. Totally relieved that we made it to be told that no, there's another 45 minutes to the highest point. Oh, my heart fell, but we continued. And finally, after what seemed like ages, we made it. Madhouse over there, but we made it. The roof of Africa. We are 1,895 meters, highest freestanding mountain in the world. Incredible. It's taking a long time. 30 years. 30 years, man. Thanks to these guys. Oh, yeah. Our guides. Yeah. Thank you very much, my team. JK. We're six. Six over there. Wow. Carrying my bag. And, and over there, Hashim. And all the others. Adventure! After coming down from the peak, we're headed to our last camp, where we get surprised by our chef with a cake to celebrate our achievement. The next day, we sadly had to say our goodbyes to our awesome team, headed out of the park, and some of us got to enjoy a very relaxing and reviving massage by the Moshi Mamas, a local cooperative which is supported by G Adventures and the NGO Planetara, empowering the women of Moshi. A perfect finish to a unique adventure with memories that will last forever.
Kilimanjaro, of course, you have to drink Kilimanjaro beer. So now it's it's official. Cheers. 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 Well done, guys.